Hey there! In today's video, we are talking about the top seven lessons that I've learned along the way in what it takes to achieve your dreams. So I scribbled all these lessons down, which I'm going to unapologetically reference while I was staying at my folks' remote cabin in Wyoming, decompressing after the holidays, gearing up for 2022, which we're now well into. So I'm going to be sharing with you the business I started that had nothing to do with grant writing, the dream I had that I originally left my corporate job to do, the one I was gonna never touch another grant again doing, right? So I usually don't share this story because it's a little bit embarrassing to me, even though it shouldn't be, and I'm gonna share it here. And then the other tips that I think you'll find useful as well. Okay, with that, let's hit it. So let's just get this embarrassing story out of the way first. So I left my corporate job to launch this business called Alaska Movement. At the time, I felt like uh, through a series of events that had happened in the preceding year, that there was this big hunger for people to engage in their community to do better work. But then they run into a bunch of roadblocks like bureaucracy is just way too complex to get through. It's really hard to coordinate. It's hard to find the other people that you want to work with. Right. I saw all these problems in driving change in our community at a very grassroots level. And so I thought, I think I can tackle that and I'm gonna make an app for it, right? I even I had these little UX designs of what it looked like, everything. I'll slice in some, some screenshots of what all of this looked like so you can see it. And I thought, well, I'll prototype it in Alaska and then this could be totally a useful piece of software throughout the world, right? But here's what happened. I was only about two and a half months in, not even. And I really realized there wasn't a succinct problem that I was solving for. I couldn't figure out what is the one thing that needs solved. So there's a bajillion problems involved in trying to drive change in our community, but I was really struggling to figure out what's that one thing that I know I can solve for. And when you don't have a clear problem, you can't build a solution. And this applies to no matter what you're tackling, especially those of you that are trying to launch a new nonprofit or you want to do something new, right? It's really important to ground the solution in the problem. So what I learned from all of that was lesson number one, fail fast. All things considered, I did fail pretty quickly. I essentially put up the white flag in March. So only three months after going full time on this. Now, it wasn't because I was quitting early or anything. Remember, I'd been doing this on the side when I was working full time for pretty much nine months prior. So it was about a year long thing before I called it quits. And it was hard to call it quits because my ego was involved. I had told everyone it was a pretty big deal that I was leaving my job to go work for myself and start a sexy startup, right? And so I had a lot of barriers internally for declaring failure. But the only thing that would have been failure would have been an unwillingness to make something hurt in the short term in exchange for a longer term gain. And to this day, that is my definition of failure, whether it's staying in a relationship because it's going to suck to have to break up and rip that bandaid off and all the work that comes with it, or, you know, it, because we don't want, because we're unwilling to make it hurt in the short term, we don't get the long term benefits. That's the only thing, in my opinion, that is failure. So I'm proud of the fact that I failed fast decided, okay, I got to do something else because A, I'm out of money and I have to do something, which for me was grant writing consulting. I could do that with my eyes closed. I could drum up work very quickly. And all of that methodology is what we talk about and teach in the grant writing unicorn collective. So that's lesson number one, fail fast. Lesson number two, every yes is a no to something else. Now, this is a real useful lesson for the people pleasers out there, which I'm not a super big people pleaser, I'd say on the whole, it really doesn't suffocate me as much as I have seen it affect Alex and others I know. But where I get hung up on is because I can do it, I think I should do it. And just because you, because you can does not mean you should. So I ended up building a list right next to my desk of everything I said no to. And it became like that was the victory. That was the milestone list, something I could celebrate. Like, what did I add to it that I said no to, be it professionally and socially, right? Because when I launched into my my own abyss of trying to figure out how I'm going to survive and build my own business, I had to say less yes to a lot less just so I could have the energy for what it takes to build something from scratch. So 
a lot less social engagements and I stopped racing and as a biker and a skier and really just focused on enjoying hobbies outdoors for the athletic benefit and my mental health benefit, but not to be a part-time job preparing to race. So the thing I'll say about that is that the transition of when you need to say no to something that has been a yes is a champ. It can be challenging. So when we decided to go all in on grant writing, the course business, for instance, I had this contract that I'd held for five years, $45,000 a year to do grant writing for this certain organization. And I knew the time had come. I knew it in my gut. I needed to let it go. And it's hard to let that much money go when you don't actually have any of the other money lined up, right? But there comes these points when you have to say no to be able to achieve your bigger picture yes, or else I wouldn't have the time to have poured into building the course into what it is today. I will add this, however, if you're in the very, very, very beginning of your career, often you need to say yes to a lot of things and the path will clear for you that is the right path. When you don't really know like which way do I wanna go, well, say yes to five different things, explore, and if you're not loving something, turn around, back out, and try the other path. There's just this point, and I wish I could draw it. It's like, it's like where the, they cross, where all of a sudden, you know, saying yes to lots of things creates opportunities for you right in the beginning, and then there comes a point where saying yes to things really starts to hurt you, and it affects your ability to continue to grow and perform into the person you know you are capable of becoming. So that's that. Every yes is a no to something else. Write down on a piece of paper everything you say no to and celebrate it. Okay, lesson number three is investing in you. My first year of business, I really, really wanted to go to end of summer camp. It's like summer camp for adults. My dad says I shouldn't call it that, but whatever, you get the idea. And wow, it was so much fun, but I barely had enough money to go. It was a three-day event and I got enough money to be able to go to two days. I literally camped on the yard because I couldn't afford to stay in the hotel that was there. Unfortunately, this is Alaska, so that's not actually weird to do that. It's not like this is in LA where I set up a tent in, a, in someone's yard of a hotel, so this was actually legit. But I mean, I did what I had to do to bootstrap getting to this event and investing in myself, and that was huge for my career. It's actually where I ended up meeting the guy that I've you know dated for the last two years that totally turned, you know, really helped inspire and grow me into the entrepreneur that I am. All right, the, you know, I'm gonna give you a couple other examples. So the Kajabi Impact Summit, right? I knew I wanted to create a course, so I went to this conference. Again, it was a huge investment. Tickets out of Alaska is a, is a lot, right? Lodging, going to something, it really stretched me thin. But what I did was I took notes, I ferociously captured everything I could from all of these amazing keynote speakers, and I put all of the notes into a Google slide deck. And I went back and referenced that slide deck over and over for like a year and a half where I was still extracting really useful information. So that's something to consider doing, right? Like invest in yourself, but make sure that you're actually drawing out the learning so that they're actionable over time. Heck, I kept losing my voice at conferences as well because I think I shift down into a more deeply manly voice, which is an annoying thing, but I do it without even really being conscious about it. I think it's because I've been in male dominated industries really my whole life and I'll lose my voice. So I actually ended up taking a course, Roger Love's voice, voice training course for people that are speaking. And literally I did it before I filmed this video just so I could try to help myself from losing my voice. So the same thing goes for you, whatever it is that you're trying to do in your career, whether if it is to become a grant writer and build a career in grant writing, then come on board because we can show you how to do all the things, investing in yourself to pull it off. But whatever it is you wanna learn, invest in you, bet on you. The best return on investment you can possibly get in this world is investing in you. All right, let's go to lesson number four. Lesson number four is to know your values and let them guide your decisions. Know your values and let them guide your decisions. All right, this is huge. The reason we have values is so that when we're in a gray, murky area or a sticky situation, we fall back to those to help make them a clear cut decision of is this a yes or is this a no? So my personal values are take responsibility, make each move count, be generous, and health. So if it does not fit into those things, then you know that's how, what helps inform my decisions. And often what I'll do is take the value and 
spin it into a question if I'm really trying to achieve something that year. So this year, the question for me is, does this situation and or person make me feel secure? If I'm secure, I can be my authentic self. If I am my authentic self, I have high vibrations, I'm happy, everyone around me is happy, right? It's this, it's this very positive effect. But if I choose to be around people that make me anxious or they're really, or avoidant or whatever, then like I'm never going to be um, reaching, right? you're not gonna actually be healthy and happy. So I found that question to be the one that I'm using to filter decisions of whether I do something or allow someone into my life, etc. So I want you to be thinking about that. If you're not crystal clear on what your values are, take the time to journal those down and think about them, right? Like our company values really, 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 really inform how we behave and what we do, right? And so those are making each move count, recognizing that today is all we have, so make it worth something. Take oh, leadership, Oops, I'm goofing mine up and blending the personal with the with the business. Um, leadership as a core value, leading from within, right? Everyone is a leader. It does nothing to do with your title. And the last value being celebrating wins. No matter how small the milestone is, it's really important that we pause and celebrate. Okay, lesson number six. Oops, it's lesson number five. All right, so break and reinvent yourself every six months. Now this is tough because you feel like you finally have your systems in place, things are finally going well, but if you're gonna to continue to grow and meet your goals, you'll find that those systems and processes and your thinking and your beliefs, they might not still serve you. And so what I've observed is that I have to really go inward, be introspective and figure out how I'm going to level up literally on a six month cadence every year since I started my business, right? So I'm gonna give you an example. When I first started my business, I said, absolutely no way am I hiring an employee because I'd hired my first employee when I was within a corporate environment and actually didn't have enough work for him and had, I actually was going to have to lay him off when he actually told me he got a new job. So that was a miracle and it worked out great, but it was very traumatic for me at the time. The thought of being someone's sole source of income and letting them down. So when he said that to me, he's like, it's ridiculous. You're never gonna achieve your goals if you don't build a team and it's more fun anyway. So after that, I decided, okay, I gotta get over this. So I ended up hiring my very first subcontractor and she helped me write three Indian community development block grants. And if I had not had her, I would have done one, maybe two, but honestly, probably just one. So within 30 day block and what it took to prepare those, instead of getting the seven grand I would have charged, I received 21,000 and my subcontractor fees were not substantial, right? Um, so I ended up making so much more in that month because I had this extra bandwidth, this extra person that was leading the charge on a proposal. We split the second one and then, you know, did QC on each other. Like that was a pull away month that really set up year two to be wildly successful. So I just wanna emphasize that you really have to push and reinvent yourself every six months and take the time to be thinking about where am I holding myself back? Where am I in my own way? And how do I get myself out of the way so that I can keep growing and achieving what you know is possible? Okay, so lesson number six. None of it matters if you don't have a viable business model. I'm a huge fan of the one page business plan canvas. If you haven't seen it, Google it. Strategizer started this. It's literally a business plan in one page. And it's so beautiful because if you cannot describe your business in one page, you're probably not really describing it in 30. And the thing about business is that it's iterating and changing all the time, no matter what you're in. So the business that I first started right January, 2018, I have my business plan canvas and I update that thing every about six months and I have all of them. And it's so cool to see the progression of assumptions you made about who you'd serve and what your price point is and how you find people you wanna serve and all of that, and it changes. So keep it simple. The other thing I would add is that, especially for those of you that are working in new ventures, new nonprofits or an organization that has a service that they're trying to make sustainable and viable, one thing I see that is the all too common mistake is that we really don't think about the underlying business model that makes something viable, whether we're talking for profit or not for profit. I almost gave up on this business, not once, but twice, because ultimately I was serving someone at a price point so low, I actually couldn't serve them. And I was giving them basically grant writing help forever. Like it was digging me into the ground. 
I was like this close to just being, I'm giving up, I'm gonna go get a regular old job, right? And it was because the business model wasn't viable. Now the way we're set up, I have about six coaches on board. We have um, coaching calls that are on, on a consistent cadence. The community is totally manageable and amazing to serve, right? The course is amazing. Like it's all set up in a way that I can give you a seven star experience and add in those amazing flares that make us feel very, I don't know, unicorn and sparkly to deliver, right? So it's just really important that you think about and get at the underlying issue of what is your business model or else it's all for naught. Okay, lesson number seven is protect and elevate your vibrations. One of the Unicorn Book Club books, so this is a unicorn-led initiative within the collective, it's a book club, it was Jen Sincero's book, You Are a Badass. Now, I thought that was the cheesiest title I've ever heard because I thought, well, duh, I know I'm a badass, a little, a little bit uh, lacking in humbleness, you could say, but I just thought this seems really, really cheesy, and that book actually changed my life. It really did. It really made all of the dots connect on how we are all connected and how maintaining your energy and high vibrations allows other really good things to come into your life, right? So I was having a really rough go at it in with a girlfriend relationship that was really on the rocks and just a lot of like personal challenges. And so Alex gave me this pendant, right? And it's, it's a crystal that's literally designed to protect your energy. And she was really trying to help me realize I needed to have healthier boundaries and really protect my energy, right? And so I've since been taking that, it's a journey, right? It's not just something I think you switch a flip and you're doing it perfectly, well, let me assure you. But it's something I've put a lot of effort into thinking about like, what is the quality of the food I eat? And let me assure you, I stinking love sugar. Like, woo, I can put a dent on some anything with chocolate in it, okay? I know it might not look it, but that's because I exercise to eat usually the way I do. But I've learned I really have to put energy into what am I eating? Who am I allowing into my life, etc. I'm super intentional about what the inputs are. I actually don't even watch the news because it's a downer for me in a huge way. And I'm not trying to be oblivious about world affairs. It's just that on the whole, that's not giving me content that's actually allowing me to make it be, do something productive with it, right? So spend some time to really think about what makes you happy, what brings you down, and figure out how to eliminate those things that are bringing you down. Okay, so that was a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and recap these top seven lessons so that you have them. Okay, lesson number one is fail fast. Lesson number two is every yes is a no to something else. Lesson number three is invest in you. Number four, let your values guide your decisions. Lesson number five, break and reinvent yourself every six months. Lesson number six, none of it matters if you don't have a viable business model. And lesson number seven, protect and elevate your vibrations. Let's see if I had anything else to add there. I guess I didn't. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in to today. If you enjoyed that, hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments what you found valuable. What's a lesson that you've learned that you want to share with the world about what it takes to achieve your dreams? Obviously, I have a lot to say on the topic of achieving your dreams. Frankly, I could go on for probably hours, but this is a good start. If you enjoyed this and want more content like this, let me know because I can definitely nerd out about it. All right, that's it. Talk to you later. Oh, 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 oh,